In this video, we study the famous Paxos protocol, which can be used to reach agreement in a distributed system. In the state replication problem, there are multiple nodes, called servers, that must maintain the same state over time when interacting with clients even in the presence of failures. All nodes communicate by exchanging messages. There are several protocols that make use of locking. The problem with locking-based protocols is that it is not so clear what should happen when a server is no longer responsive and does not provide its lock anymore. Even worse, if a client crashes while holding the lock, it is not clear how the system can proceed. Instead of using locks, the servers can issue tickets. As with locks, the servers hand out tickets upon request. However, there are two differences between locks and tickets. Unlike locks, tickets can be issued again even if the previous ticket is not returned, so there is no problem if a ticket holder crashes. Moreover, tickets can expire, in which case the ticket can no longer be used to gain access to the service for which the tickets are used. A nice property is that tickets can easily be implemented using simple counters. In this example, the ticket number 1 is no longer accepted because ticket number 2 is the latest ticket. We will now attempt to build a simple protocol using tickets. The goal of the protocol is to execute a single command for the sake of simplicity. As we will see, the Paxos protocol is also used to agree on a single command. Paxos can be extended for the case of multiple commands, but in this video, we focus on executing a single command. The first step is to request tickets from the servers. We assume here that one of the servers fails to respond, which is okay because we only need tickets from a majority of servers. Once the client has enough tickets, it sends the command that it wishes to execute on the servers back together with the tickets. If the tickets are still valid, the servers store the received command and return an acknowledgement to the client. The client can then send the request to execute the stored command. Once the servers receive this request, the command is executed. This protocol is quite simple but is it correct? Does it guarantee that the same command is executed at every server? Or is it possible that some servers execute different commands? You can stop the video here to think about it before continuing if you wish. Did you figure out the problem? It is possible that the client suddenly becomes very slow or goes offline for some time after receiving the acknowledgements. Now, client 2 requests tickets. Let's assume that server 3 is now online again but server 1 does not respond. So, server 2 and 3 both send a ticket to client 2. Client 2 then sends its command back together with the received tickets. Since the tickets are valid, server 2 and 3 both store the command. Note that server 2 removed the command of client 1 in favor of the command of client 2. Client 2 then receives the acknowledgements. Now, client 1 becomes active again and both clients send the instruction to execute the command to the servers. As we can see, server 1 and server 2 do not execute the same command, so we failed to ensure state replication. How can we fix this problem? A clever mechanism is the following. When a server already has a stored command and it receives a request for a ticket, it returns not only the ticket but also the stored command. The client can then also support the execution of this command, which must have come first. There is still a problem though. What if the client receives two different commands from the servers? What should the client do in this case? Again, stop the video here to think about what the client should do. We'll continue here in a few seconds. Did you figure it out? It is important to see that commands are only stored when the client receives the ticket from a majority of servers. Since majorities always intersect, the two commands must be associated with different tickets, so it is safe to always support the command associated with the most recent ticket. In the example here, the orange ticket is more recent and so the client chooses to support this ticket. Armed with these techniques, we are now in the position to discuss the Paxos protocol. We explain the protocol using this example with three servers and two clients. Each server stores the number of the most recent, and therefore valid, ticket. In the beginning, each server simply stores the number zero, because no tickets have been issued yet. Client 1 sends a request for ticket 1 to the servers. Since this is the number of the next ticket, the servers all return tickets. 
the servers do not pass along any command because no commands are stored in the servers yet. Having received the ticket from a majority of servers, client 1 attaches its command and returns the tickets. The servers store the commands and return acknowledgements to client 1. As we said, it is perfectly fine for any client to crash at any time. So, we assume here that client 1 now crashes before any command is executed. However, just now client 2 becomes active, wishing to execute a different command. We assume that client 2 has already learnt that the next valid ticket number is 2, so it sends a request for ticket number 2. The servers accept the request, but since they already stored a command, they return the ticket together with the command of client 1 and the ticket number 1 used to store the command. Client 2 then supports the command of client 1 as well and returns this command together with ticket number 2. The servers see that the tickets are valid and therefore return acknowledgements to client 2. Client 2 can then issue the request to execute the command and, as we can see, all servers execute the same command. Note that even if client 1 suddenly came back and sent out the request, all servers would still execute the same command. And this is how Paxos works. It is not hard to show that the following theorem holds. If a command is executed, all servers eventually execute the same command. The argument goes as follows. If a majority of servers store C, every ticket returned to the servers must contain C. The reason is that a different command can only replace C if it has a greater ticket number, which must have come after command C was stored. However, if a request is sent to a majority after C is stored, at least one server will then return this command C and the client will support it. Clearly, there can only be one such command, because all majorities intersect. So, eventually, there is a client that instructs the server to execute the stored command, which must be C. While this is a great result, there is one slight problem. Notice that the theorem only says that the same command is executed if any is executed at all. The theorem does not say that there is necessarily such a command. Why is that? Let's consider this execution. Client 1 requests tickets for ticket number 1. The request is granted and the tickets are returned. Now, client 2 requests tickets for ticket number 2. This is the next higher ticket number, so this request is granted too and tickets are returned. Client 1 then sends its command for ticket number 1 to the servers. However, the servers are already at ticket number 2, so the tickets used by client 1 are no longer valid and no command is stored. After waiting for some time, client 1 tries again by sending requests for ticket number 3. Again, this is the correct next ticket number, so the servers issue tickets for this ticket number. Now client 2 acts again and sends its command with ticket number 2. As it happened before to client 1, the tickets are no longer valid and the command is not stored. It is easy to see that this interaction can go on indefinitely. This limitation can be overcome by introducing random timeouts, which make this scenario unlikely. Still, it is important to understand that Paxos cannot guarantee that the protocol will terminate. Let's summarize what we've learned. We considered the problem of state replication. As explained in the previous video, the goal of state replication is to maintain a consistent state across multiple servers when dealing with multiple clients that interact with these servers independently and concurrently. In this video, we learnt about the concept of a ticket and how the Paxos protocol uses tickets to ensure that all servers execute the same command if a command is indeed executed. We also learnt that Paxos does not guarantee that any command is actually executed because clients may constantly invalidate the tickets used by other clients. Moreover, all this work was only to execute a single command. We can run Paxos for each command that we want to execute, or use a different algorithm that can deal with many possible concurrent commands more efficiently. Thanks for watching.